Welcome to Cabrera's demonstration of local data storage exploitation where I go. My name is Raul Sharma and today we're going to take a look at how to perform security tests on a mobile application's exploit vulnerabilities with the local data storage. For this demonstration, we're going to use iGo. iGo is a mobile application that allows you to identify and exploit mobile application security vulnerabilities. This program is built and maintained by OWASP. On many mobile apps, we store lots of different data on the local data store. This can range from temporary storage data to sensitive information like accounts, passwords, contact lists, you name it. While mobile OS developers have recommendations for dealing with privacy issues in the local data store, developers often fail to follow the guidance to implement a secure solution. Furthermore, testers are unaware how to test for poor implementations. Today, we're going to take a look at how to test for local data storage vulnerabilities. For this demonstration, we're going to take a look at exploiting the vulnerability on iGoat. I won't cover the installation or the setup in this video, but if you're interested, check in the video description and click the appropriate link. Now I would like to navigate to the home screen of the iGoat application. From the home screen, I'm going to select the Data Protection Rust category. Then I'm going to select the Local Data Storage subcategory. Going through this exercise will show us how mobile apps shouldn't store data locally. Next, I'm going to click on the Start Exercise button. On this page, I'm going to enter a username along with the password and click the Login option. Please memorize the values I'm going to enter into the, into the following fields. For the username field, I'll be typing in user, and for the password field, I'll be typing in pass. This will replicate the typical login prompt available on many mobile applications. Now I would like to navigate to where these credentials were stored to see how they're stored. In a secure application, I expect the credentials I enter to be encrypted. The file that contains these credentials is heavily nested, which makes it very difficult to find through the finder. Therefore, to find the file that contains the credentials, I'm going to use the following find command in the terminal. This command will look specifically inside the library backslash developer folder for a file by the name of credentials.sqlite. Now that I have discovered the location of the credentials.sqlite file, I would like to copy it to my desktop so that I can try to extract the data using SQLite client. To copy the file from its current location to the desktop, I'm going to use the following cp command. This CP command will copy it from its source onto my desktop. To open the file from the desktop, I'm going to use the DB browser for SQLite. That was pretty easy. Let's go ahead and navigate to the credentials SQLite file that I copied earlier to my desktop and run some queries to display the contents. Now I'm going to open up the database. Not much here, but there is a creds table in the database that looks interesting. The query select star from creds will show us all the contents of that table. Press execute and our query is run. Look what we found. Remember that username and password we typed in earlier? As we can see, the username and the password is stored in plain text. 
That means if I can get this data, a malicious app, a well-crafted scripting attack, or a mobile device thief can just as easily steal the sensitive information from the user of my application. Time to open up a bug report and send this back to the developers. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something on local data storage exploitation, and we hope you check out Kavero's other videos in our mobile security testing series, or follow us on YouTube. If you would like to learn more about Coveros, what we do, or how we can help your organization, check out our website at www.coveros.com. That's www.coveros.com.